Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the mobile web app deployment workshop. In this workshop, we will cover. So, um, so we will cover Git basic, Git basics. How do you use Git to deploy a web app? I think I hear you right. Okay, so yeah. Um, creating a web app on Azure. Um, the basics of a, a website or web app, whatever you want to call it, and that includes basic HTML. I won't be talking so much about CSS, but JavaScript is important. And in this JavaScript portion, we will dive into a little bit of fun features that JavaScript has, such as buttons. And we'll make it reactive. And also, we will make use of our mobile device, the gyroscope and accelerometer inside our mobile device. So that our web app is motion responsive. Uh, so, so a quick introduction. Uh, there is Ashley. Uh, he's going to help me today. So if any questions, raise your hand. Ashley will go over and help you. Ashley is a CG year three, like me. Um, uh, okay, what else? <laughs> uh, he has uh, worked in a few internships. He's very experienced. For myself, um, I am also in an internship right now at Autodesk. I've been programming for like... Um, Three to four years, uh, and both of us we we are from this program called Microsoft Student Partners, and that's why we are here today. Yeah. And so um, so what is something cool that you can ultimately do with with this technology stack? Oh wait, okay. Actually, I'm not done yet. And then after creating your web app, of course, you will learn how to deploy to the cloud. And the cloud that we are using today is Azure. So then you, you will see your, your web app public. So I hope everyone has had your Azure accounts. Who has not had your, who has not set up yet? Everyone's ready. Um, so has everyone had your web? Who has created a web app on Azure? Who's fast? Anyone? Anybody else? Okay, if not, okay, never mind. I'll go through that in a few minutes. But first, as motivation, right? I'm going to show you a little cool thing. I'm sorry, I'm having a bit of a few. Um, so, so how do you debug a mobile web app? So here's how. I think most of you are familiar with F12, right? To launch the developer console. And in your console. Oh, first you have to, of course, connect your phone to your computer using a USB cable. Ah. Then you go to... Uh, hmm. Wait, never mind. 
Okay, it's not really picking up my phone, but... Okay, now my we'll move on. <laughs> uh, okay, never mind. I'll show you like after the whole thing. But anyway, let's move on to the web app proper. Um, so if you go to portal azure azure dot com. Uh, okay, so right now we're going to cover how to create a web app. Lah. So first, in the search bar, right, you type web app. By the way, if you can't follow, right, there is a link somewhere in the setup guide on how to create a web app. So, um, yeah, go to... Um, Yeah, if you click on create resource and you search for web app, which is like already here, yeah. And you click create, then you bring you to this page. So you name your web app. That would be like the the URL you want. So like it can be anything like I don't know. Hi, hi, hi. I don't know if this is available. So you can create a new resource group. What resource group means is like the, the same set of files that your web app is going to look at. So yeah. Then for service plan, just create new, enter a name. I don't know, like duck. For location, um would recommend Southeast Asia, so um, that you have the pool of servers in Southeast Asia that is closest to us, so you have faster response times if you are in Singapore. For pricing tier, just go to the free one. So yeah, you, here's where you can view all the pricing tiers. And just click OK. Then you will want to click the pin to dashboard so that it's more convenient and just click create. Yeah, so um, you'll see that it's creating this for you. By the way, who's familiar with cloud or servers? So, right, um, what is happening is uh, Microsoft has this um, pool of servers somewhere in Southeast Asia, and when you ask for a resource like that, they will dedicate a space on their servers for you to use. And so when you enter in your URL, you are actually accessing the files from that server, that little space that they gave you. So yeah. Okay, while waiting, we can all go to uh, GitHub. So we'll go and download our demo code for today. So this is the URL you want to go to. 
And if you look at the README, there's actually instructions. Uh. So that's like, if you want to go back and relook at it, you can look through the README. So um, I would like everyone to, uh, so okay, so for today, right, you'll be creating a web app that screams. So it will scream in two ways. If your phone supports motion sensors, which means it has a gyroscope and accelerometer, when you shake your phone, um, your phone will scream. Uh. But then if not, uh, okay, actually, if yes um, and no so, uh, we also create a button that when you click it, it will scream. So yeah, that's what we'll be doing today. Then we'll deploy that. So as a, de as a demo, I have one made already. It is here. Wait, let me just... Uh, how, I kind of forget how to do it, but how to... Um, Okay, so this is the the link on how to do remote debugging on your on your Chrome with a phone connected. So yeah, just follow this remote devices. Okay, there it is. Um Okay, um, it's still waiting for my phone to register, but uh -huh. okay, never mind. Um, anyway, yeah, this is um a sample app that I made of what we will be accomplishing today. Hmm. So it's like you click the button, he screams. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's something simple like that. And on the mobile device, it would be great if this thing will pick up the. It would be great if this thing can pick up the device thing, but. Okay, it does not seem to be picking up my phone. That's unusual, but anyway. Is it working? Oh, there it is. Okay, great. It works. Okay, so if I go to the thing on my mobile phone. Yeah, so you all can see my, my phone is on the screen right now, right? And because of course, like a laptop doesn't have gyroscope and accelerometer sensors, sensors are, but my phone has. You see all those running numbers, right? Okay, my phone just detected a shake, so it just screamed. So, um, yeah, you see all those running numbers, those are like the accelerometer and gyroscope values that's moving and recording, no? So it's basically like an IoT device. Uh, very noisy. <laughs> so yeah, so this is what we'll be making today. 
Okay, so um, I think by now everyone's web app should be ready because mine is. Yeah, I can click like this to go back to the dashboard. So yeah, my web app is ready. So okay, now we are going to write code or copy and paste code. So I think, uh, yeah. Okay, let's go, I'll go to this URL. Is everyone here yet? Okay, then go to clone or download. You press this button, so we copy it. Then um, I think it'd be a good idea to like make a new folder. Or, what? The setup sheet, is it? Oh uh, no, it's not. Who can find my repo? Oh, okay. Um, go to, you go to this website, uh, github.com, potato wagon, uh, cd dash app dash demo. And once it's like, right, I'll send you to the Slack link so that, you know, you just click. Uh, oh no, I mean my company Slack, oh gosh. <laughs> okay, so I guess now everyone knows my my company now. Okay, how do I, oh no, I don't have the app. Ah, never mind, never mind. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so everyone's here, right? Okay. So am I ready? Okay, the, the link is in Slack, uh, the Slack general chat. So, yeah. Okay. Um. You go here. Who has? So if you do a git remote dash v, which stands for verbose, um, you can see your repository, your remote repository. So currently, mine is um, pointing towards my repository, which I cloned from. So um, yeah, is everyone at this step? So, of course, right, when you want to push, you are not going to push to my repository on GitHub because you don't have access to that. 
So what um, I, I want everyone to do is to go back to your own GitHub. And I want you to create a new repo. So that there will be the repository that you will be pushing for pushing to. And that will be the repository that your web app will look at because we are going to deploy from GitHub. So that's what that means. So um, you click this and you go to a new repository. You can type in your repository name like uh, C and um, and yeah, create repository. So who's at this step already? Who's done? Anyone help? Is everyone lost? Can everyone follow? <laughs> so what we just did is to create a Git repository, a GitHub repository. <laughs> Who needs help with this step? Thank 
So I think as someone pointed out, you can of course fork it lah. But I think because you all will be creating your own projects from scratch, right? So most likely you will be creating your own repository. So that's how to do it all. You click a plus, you click a, a, a new repository. And then you just fill in everything and you press the green button. So to fork, right, it's very simple. Let's say forking is like if if you want to work on someone else's source code, you know, you want to have it on your own profile, you can just press this button. Fork. Yeah. So, well, there's no point if I press that. <laughs> so, yeah. 
two ways you can do it. So anyone else needs help? <laughs> Okay, if everyone's done, I think I will move on to the next step, which is adding your newly created repository on GitHub to Git so that so that it knows um how to find your GitHub repository. So oh my god. So um so just now I created one repository called Silly, right? So now I'm gonna add this. I'm gonna copy this link here. I'm gonna go back to my uh, git and I'm gonna do a git remote at and I'm gonna name my remote something. So maybe I'll call it like GitHub. I'm gonna paste the link. So it has been added. So how do you check? So you do a git remote dash v. And then you can see that now my machine, my local, is pointing to two repositories in GitHub. One is the original one, which I downloaded my code from. And the other one is the empty GitHub repository, which I created. So who is, okay, I'll give you like five minutes to do this, and then I'll see who's lost. Anyway, who doesn't understand what I'm saying and needs help? Okay, so so I think like just now many people can't see the phone, right? Okay, is this slightly better? Can people see? Okay, so, yeah. So, uh, this is the... This is the command to add the repository that you created. And this is the command to view your remotes that your git repository is pointing to. Um, so GitHub is the, the name that I call the remote repository which I'm pointing to. So it's like right now I'm pointing, I can also call it anything I want, uh, like oranges or apples. Yeah, it's like a pointer. So I, I point to, okay, I want to push a GitHub. So my my git knows what to do. Who 
has done the fork the fork method for the fork method is also the same once you have like um forked it right so you like press fork then you go to like whichever fork repository you forked it to then also same step you just copy this link and you add it to your you add it to your git your local git remotes collection Who's lost and needs help? Anybody Why do I have to create my own repository on GitHub? And and then push to that one. Why cannot I just push to mine? Of course you can't push to mine. That's mine. I'm selfish. But no, like, the real reason is like, you know your web app that you create, it's go you're gonna have to supply your own credentials to look at um an online repository in the cloud. In this case, the GitHub repository that you create to like extract those files from. So so your web app cannot read from my GitHub repository if, and you cannot push to my GitHub repository. If that's the case, then anyone can edit my website, right? You don't want that. So yeah, you have to create your own repository. I hope that clears things up. So who else needs help with this step? Anyone lost? Yes. Okay, so I think I will move on to the next step, which is editing code. So I hope everyone's final final call for FAQs. No more? Anyone need help? Okay, I'll move on. So, um, okay, next step, right? We are going to do a little Chrome edit, or if you want to call it coolance, uh, Chrome hack. Not really Chrome hack, but yeah. So, um, for these instructions, you can adjust your Chrome flex. So, you know, your Chrome browser in your mobile phone, right, has a couple of flags that, that um, you know, you can unlock cool stuff with. So, just follow this number one option in your readme. In your search bar, you can go to, I mean, do it on your mobile phone, lah, because since this is a mobile web app. And the purpose of un unlocking this generic sensor flag, right, is so that we can enable um, the generic sensor API, 
which is going to access your accelerometer. Um, it, you can try. I don't have an iPhone, so I'm not too sure. But um, so today, the motion sensor code that we will be touching on is a generic sensor API, which is a, this linear acceleration sensor. However, right, the code, if you look at the code right now that we have, Okay, I like to use visual. Let, let's launch our IDEs. Let's look at the code right now. Um, so you launch visual studio code. I hope everyone has that. It's the same for Sublime. You go and open a new folder. Um, go to yeah, select C app demo, and here you can explore the the files. Okay, is it too small? I will increase the font size. How to increase font size? Ah. Hey, you know how to increase font size or not? Where, where, where? Just now, just now, you just now when you go. Scroll, 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 scroll. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Control plus equal. And Thanks. Just control. Okay, I think this is big enough, right? Thanks, Ashley. Okay, so um. If you look at the JavaScript code, we can see that there are two controls or two APIs for motion detection being used here. The first is device motion handler, which I think everyone has it already. This is the one that is pretty much uh, consistent across all platforms and most of your mobile devices will be depending on this one or uh, dependent so um yeah if you do uh, orbital project that uses motion sensors um, i would recommend using the device motion handler however like in the recent chrome updates right that kind of broke that's why i threw in another api but now it's working again yeah chrome fixed it so so um So if you see here, at the event listener to Windows, insert accelerometer here. These are like empty codes that we'll be inserting code to. So it's like, um, yeah, for your orbital project, just copy and paste. Feel free to copy and paste all these code to make your project work. So to use the generic motion sensor API, you will first have to enable some Chrome Flex. And you can do so following all these instructions. So who has already enabled your Flex? I won't spend so much time on this. So yeah. OK, so now we'll move on to writing code or copy pasting code because we don't have much time. So first, we are going to add a HTML button. So right now we are at number two, uh, code snippets. If you go to your index.html, right? And then you will see here, insert HTML button. So just uh, copy and, is that my phone? Oh, okay, anyway, yeah. Just copy paste this button code here. And as you can see, um, you can of course edit like whatever it's written here. You can change it to like 
push me, you know, and save it. So, a bit of explanation. When you see, if you notice, these two files are called index, index.html, index.js. So, when your when the server deploys your files, right, the home page, the first file that it always looks for is called index. So yeah, whichever page you want your web app or website to display when whichever user first logs in, right, just name it index. So um, if you see it's on click thing, uh, it's actually calling a JavaScript function called screen. So right now we're going to add that in. You hear at right at the bottom. Oh, by the way, who's done? Who is still stuck with the button code? <laughs> Should I wait a, a little bit more? So the first step, very simple. Just copy paste the button code, which is this. And you can find it. You can find it um here. HTML button. So I guess it's pretty simple, right? Just paste one line of HTML code. So we move on to insert the logic for this screen for this screen function. So this means that when you click on the button, you will launch this JavaScript function called screen. So yeah. Here is the function for screen. You can of course implement your own code. Here. So you can like say do something cool. I don't know. So like um change the text of HTML button when you click it or something. But whatever you want ha that happens when you press the button goes into inside this function name screen. So is anyone stuck at this step? Console log. Okay. No. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Okay, so um, one thing to, so if you, okay, so this console log thing, right, it's super useful if you want to debug your web app. You can do like, things like, like your, I think most of you have even C, right? It's like your print F, la. I'm pushed, I'm screaming. Yeah, something like that. Okay. And then the next step would be to add our linear acceleration sensors. Um, by the way, who wants to, shall we like do our first deploy? Do we just see what our code does? So that'd be great, right? So um, for the deployment part, Okay, um, because like uh, there will be some um, functions here which are incomplete and that will cause a break in the code. The code will throw a compile error. So what um, I would like everyone to do is to comment out everything else except for the screen. Okay, hmm, okay. Comment out from...
By the way, everyone is familiar with JavaScript multi-line comments, right? So a JavaScript multi-line comment is uh something like 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 that. Yeah. Okay, so I've commented. Oh yeah, I need to like comment more. Yeah, oh my god. I should have used like single line comments instead, but oh well, never mind. Shit. Okay, so now I've commented out every single thing in my code except for the first until line 16 because if you look at the screen function right it is dependent upon the audio picker oh shit i also need to comment i, I can't comment on the random picker code so so the screen function depends on random picker app dot audio which is here here and yeah so so right now i'm gonna deploy my code lah. so if you go to um if you go to property is it properties or okay deployment options go back to your azure portal oh by the way is everyone is everyone with me everyone's okay okay so i go to microsoft azure i click on my web app that i made i go to deployment options by the way the instructions are here lah. so if you Need a visual guide. It is. Mm, okay, where did my. The instructions are all the way at number four deploy to Azure. So we will go to GitHub. We will configure it. So I think this this part will answer all your questions like why why must you create your own GitHub repository? You know. So here you go to GitHub. Then authorization, you have to add your account. Then you choose the project. For me, I'm going to choose Silly. And the branch will be by default master branch. And I'm going to click OK. OK, so now if I go to um, my web apps URL, Currently, there's nothing uh, since like, my repository is empty, right? So now, after making the edits to your code and saving them, if you launch uh, your git again, now we're going to push to our remote, re remote repository called github so we're gonna do a okay we are gonna check on the changes that we made so if we don't git status you can see that two files have been modified we are gonna stage our changes using a git at all or a git at dot they're both the same thing so now if i see my um status again 
they've been staged. So when I commit, hit commit, and I'll add a message. Like, you need la. You need. I've committed my changes. So who has already finished committing? They will add those that have been changed. So we um in this case we only changed two files, right? The index.html and the index.js, right? So when you add, when you hit dot add, hit add all, you're just adding all the files within the same folder. No, you're actually yeah. adding all the changes. Yeah. So all in your whole laptop? No, no, no. Only in your repository. Yeah. So um, let's say I just want to add one file. I don't want to, like, okay, so if you do a git status, right? Remember in this top portion? It shows that red means that okay it's been changed and it's not been staged. So they will only look at these two files. And your all means these two files only. So it's like um your dot so this repository has a dot git file. So okay. Uh, So you just keep push you because you already have your trust. Okay, so, so it's 
So anyone else needs help with um, any more questions? So once you've committed, right, you see that your git status is clean. Now you do a git push to GitHub. So it's like whichever. So yeah, remember we are not be pushing to our remote. So we do a. These are my my remotes in the cloud, right? The origin one is the one owned by me. The GitHub one is the new one that I created. So I'm gonna do a git push to GitHub. Yeah. We want to specify which branch or what. Wow, who is so fast? <laughs> master, master. So means um this to specify like I think the first time you're from you to like don't know what setup she means, so always just put this. So this means like my local master and I'm pushing to my remote master. So I'm gonna press yes. And then um, there should be a prompt. Oh, by the way, is this big enough? Can everyone see? Can, right? Okay, now I'm going to enter my GitHub credentials. Potato wagon. Okay, so now I've successfully pushed to my repository. La in github so i'm gonna i'm gonna look at it so if you view the repository that you just created you realize that your code is now there and if you see the remember just now we did a dash m right and then you added some message so here is the message that you wrote so it's like a little memo to yourself i changed this file and this is the reason why i changed it so that is normally what goes inside the message now mm -hmm. and if you go to your url on azure so in this case, it's for me, it's like, hi, hi, hi. And then if you refresh it, you see that your code is now on the internet. So if you push, it should make some sound. La. So who, who has accomplished this already? That's great. Who needs help? Or is confused? Or is questions? Thank you. 
Uh, so I hope everyone is done with this. And anyone not done yet? I see some people shaking your phones. Uh. Are you all so fast that you are already inserted in the the code for motion sensors? <laughs> Who has already finished the motion sensor part? <laughs> Wow, okay, that's fast. Okay, shake your phone and make it scream if you have already finished the motion sensor part. Okay, fast, fast, fast. Very good. <laughs> so, next up, right, we are going to insert in the motion sensor code. Okay, so right, I think just now we uncommented everything except for the portion for JavaScript to make the phone screen. So now we are going to undo what we did. So, okay, let's uncomment all the parts. But remember to leave those comments like insert whatever here, comment, or else your code won't work. So yeah, just uncomment everything. Thing. Okay, so this is what your code should look like right now. Everything is uncommented. Can you see? All the relevant stuff has been uncommented. And now we are going to continue inserting code. So first, right, we are going to insert the code for the acceler accelerometer, the generic sensor accelerometer code. So if you go back to the readme, um, if you go here, linear acceleration center sensor, and just copy all this and paste this code snippet under insert accelerometer here, which is around line eighteen. Oh yeah, by the way, right. Um, for those of you who have like your phones already working, that's because you are using the device motion handler, the the de facto motion sensor API, which is written here from which is yeah is so if you notice right, the way this code is structured. It is modularized such that you can add as many motion sensor APIs as you want. All you need to do is just load it into this event called device motion. And then there will be one handler called device motion handler that will pick it up. <laughs> so the benefit of having two APIs is more compatibility for more devices because sometimes not only devices, browsers as well. Sometimes Chrome works better with generic sensor API. Sometimes Safari works better with device motion handler. It's quite hard to predict, so just have to. And next, you are going to add an event listener to Windows. So just copy paste this here. Um,
And then we are going to make our app screen, which is under the do silly stuff portion. Of course, you can add in other things. Huh? So yeah, you can use this as a template for your project if you are interested in incorporating motion responsiveness to your web app. So I will copy paste this and put it under do silly stuff. Now save it. And now I will do the same thing. I will deploy my my code. I'll do a git. Okay. One thing you have to make sure that all your files are safe. So they'll be registered by Git and we'll push to GitHub. So one thing to look out for, right, is if you see a yellow circle. So for example, I, I did an edit. There's a yellow, there's a okay, it's not yellow, it's white. There's a white circle here. It means that I there's an edit which has not been saved. So yeah, just make sure to press Ctrl S on all your files, make the white circles go away, and then and then you do the same thing. Need status to check. Okay, I modified my index.js file. Can see, can see. Okay, then um, I'll do a git all, and I'll do a git status to check that all my files has been added. Oh, why do we want to add only one single file? I just do a git add. Then you copy that file name. So like, for example, like that. Yeah. Then you do a git commit dash m. And then you say why you committed. Or like, for me, I want to say added generic motion sensor API. Okay. And now I'm going to push to my remote. Okay, so now if I go to my GitHub and check. <coughs> I refresh it. I can see that, oh. My commit message added generic motion sensor API. My commit has been successful. And I can see that the code that I recently uh, changed has been added too. And then if I go to my web app and I refresh, I can see that, well, I mean, this, this is a motion sensor thing. So I have to go to my phone and have a look. Yeah, I think I hear some successful um, apps already because like, things yeah. are screaming, people's phones are making noises. So, so yeah, I can go to, um, I open my debugger. I will look at my remote devices. <laughs> and I will inspect it. So you can see, it's very small, but you can see that. Uh, so, so yeah, this is, um, oh, and another cool thing, you can actually like debug using all the DOM viewers and stuff like that. So yeah. Um, I shake my phone. It screams. My phone is the loudest. Okay, so um, yeah, I think that that's, that's it lah. Yeah. <laughs> Any more questions? I think, oh, we are, we are early. Everyone's very fast. So I guess everyone has who has not have your web app deployed onto the internet yet. Okay. 
or who has like any questions or anything. Okay, so since everyone's like pretty much done, um, I will show you something cool as promised. So what, what's the possibilities with a web app that responds to motion? You can actually do VR on your phone without a headset. VR on your mobile web app. So for example, this is a pro program that I, um, an app that I written. Uh, yeah. I think you all can, oops, not active. Mm. Is it possible that we only have a good one? I can't find a flex on Try Safari. Your, I think because we are using two, two APIs, right? The other one, the device motion handler, should work on Safari. I'm not too sure why it should work. I don't know why it's not but... No, it's just a Chrome thing. It's not working. <laughs> but your button works. Sorry. Yeah, button. Oh, the button works. Um. And then the values are changing. No sound, ah. Yeah, your body works. Uh, never mind. You can. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Apple, Apple is special. Okay, actually, in this case, right, you only use it accelerometer. Uh, your gyroscope is also available. Um, so, okay, I'm not going to show you. Uh, thanks for asking. Um, with your accelerometer and gyroscope, you can actually write 3D rendering libraries such as this. So, you see, this is a 3D map of where we are right now. You can see, um, yeah, you can, you can look around. Um, you can see right now, um, we are at, oops, can, 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 I want to see the deep. <laughs> we, are, we are at the National University of Singapore, right? You can see the words. And you can see the scenery, you can look at the sky. It's all motion, you know. Hook up your accelerometer and gyroscope and you can do all this. You can see that the sea is there. So this is like, like um, a VR map, you know. Quite cool, right? And then you can put things on. Oh, by the way, this is Edgy. I'm so what I did is uh, Edgy has a 3D scene, it has a camera, it's a camera that can be controlled by gyro JavaScript. And so you just um, hook this JavaScript, write code to hook the camera up to your accelerometer and gyroscope sensor values. 
and then you can write you can pretty much control the camera with your phone's motion so yeah who, who would like to come out and give give this a try <laughs> you can look at the sky you can also change your you can go full screen you can change your uh, animation so let's say i want to fly to the space and, and yeah see is what um it would look like if right now we are sitting on like a helicopter and we're like put a parachute down see capo link stuff like that uh yeah it's pretty cool right then you want to go further up like iss change animation oh look it's quite cool so yeah i can do stuff like this but of course this is a bit advanced you need to like do a bit of math calculate the gravity value of your accelerometer and and yeah so but if you really want to do vr right i think there's a libraries out there like 3js you can go and have a look at 3js so you don't have to go through all the mathematical pain so yeah stuff like that yeah i hope you enjoyed today's session and if you have any more questions now is the time to ask me yes um, like let's say if your app has dependencies on um whatever you include into your repo, Azure will automatically pick it up. So Azure is just like an how would you say an interface. It um so it's like um you know they will look at the files in your GitHub repository and use those files. So you actually are not adding anything to Azure. Azure is just like I'm just telling Azure where to look, you know? Okay, so like, for example, if I'm using Python and I create a virtual environment, so I need to input my virtual environment files inside the repo. How do you create, um, how do you, okay, I don't really understand what you mean, but okay, I for, think... For Python web apps, right? Uh, I'm not really sure how to, how you deploy Python web apps on Azure yet, but then you can actually Google it. And uh, there are other ways to also deploy Python apps on. Are you using uh, Python apps? Yeah. Like Django? Yeah. Yeah. So we have to work Django and Azure. But there's also Django and Heroku. There's actually quite some requirements you need to go through before you can just uh, put Django apps on the back. Because, of course, examples like this, right? It's just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Yeah. For, for framework apps, it requires more steps. I think for a virtual environment, right, it means that but I mean, you are... I know, right, because I have deployed Django as a lot of times. Um, you don't push the whole virtual environment onto the thing. Basically, you, you specify some requirements, and when you push on the cloud, then the server will create its own virtual environment to run your app. Yeah, you don't need the whole Python library. Like, yeah, that, I was like, so, yeah, it's a, just a command, right? Then you do it on the server. Yeah. 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 Well, different yeah. servers have different requirements. So we need to be up. Any more questions? Uh, any questions about your orbital projects? Yeah, I think I included my number in like that thing where I own that mistake, but never mind. <laughs> um, yeah, any questions about, okay, about the code? Who has successfully finished deploying? Raise your phone if you have done it. A laptop too, or hand, whatever, food. So I, I guess everyone's quite quite happy today because finish deployed your your code to the internet. I think that's the main takeaway that's very uh, applicable to a lot of your projects if you're doing web-based stuff, right? Deployment is a crucial part of sharing your code with the world. So yeah, I hope everyone had fun. I know this is slated to end at 3 p.m., but we've finished early. So now... Um, um, I, um, since everyone's staying, uh, my phone is open for whoever wants to try this or else I'm here if you want to ask any questions about 
the orbital projects about what you learned today. Okay. Oh, I need to take pictures. By the way, who's doing web web projects? Or oh, web projects? Oh, okay, okay, cool, cool. Ah, uh, yes. How do you take it off? Um, undeploy. Just okay. Go to deployment options. Oh, by the way, if, if all y'all can wait a bit, I'll wait for my friend to come back. Then we take one picture. I need to send it somewhere. Yeah. Disconnect. Oh. Yeah. So, so thank you very much for coming. I mean,